Well, hello, welcome back everybody. This is Learn Agar. And today we're gonna look at something quite interesting. Uh, recently, I made a video explaining how we can edit hex files in our Linux uh, PC so that we can then use those modified programs within the Agon Lite. And not even a couple of hours later, I believe, after posting the video, guess what? We had a native hex editor for our Agon Lights. So I'm going to show you not only the hex editor, but a revised hex editor that was updated where we can compare and see the differences between two files right there on your Agon Light screen. It's very nice, very wonderful. So in addition to that, I plan on uh, sharing with you some things that I've been uh, seeing in, in our community, some developments uh, before we continue with the uh, topic of indirection that we had started a couple of videos back, but there's so much going on. I, I, I need to share this with everybody. So stick with me. Um, there's a whole bunch of developments going on in GitHub. Okay. Um, so if we look at our GitHub and we look at the topic of agon dash light and you look for the recently updated, you will see there's a lot of development. Look, three hours ago, agon utils. These are utilities for the Agon Light computer. We have the Easy 80 ASM from Envenomator. These nine hours ago, um, some the Agon projects, which is a very wonderful uh, site, and they uploaded the bootloader. It's uh, amazing. Um, they also have uh, the Agon software where it gives us a list of the different software available, some templates for the C compiler tool chain. I got it working <laughs> thanks to the help of a whole bunch of Discord users. Um, there's so much going on. Um, let me see if I can update a couple of things here. So in terms of the software, let me see if I can show you what I've been uh, up to and seeing here. Bear with me, let me try to focus you a little better. So in terms of the software, there's a, a whole bunch of utilities. Let me click on the utilities. And this is the hex editor right here, okay? The Agon hex editor, natively on our Agon lights, we can edit hex files and do a diff to compare the two. Um, there's also this one called Agon Utils, not the utilities. That's a one that we already had uh, with a whole bunch of really neat stuff. But this other one here, the Agon Utils, if you click on it, you will see these are utilities for the Agon Light, and they have now, check this out, we have an Echo MOSLET. We have a grep MOSLET. I think we had the strings one. And now we have a word count MOSLET, which was updated 18 hours ago, and I haven't even tried this one yet. This is so cool. We'll probably take a look at that one later. Um, this is the updated release for, for the Agon Hex file. And part of the reason why I was exploring the C compiler is that Within the assets here, we have our zip file. And if I uh, show you the contents of this file, I'm gonna go ahead and sa uh, save it. I already have it, but I'm gonna do it again. This is uh, gonna be with a number one. And if I show you the contents of it, <clears throat> um, on hex, let's see. Where did it go? Here we go. Release four dash one. I'm gonna go into the source file. 
See, this main.c program is what we have. We don't have the binary. So in order to compile that, we need to do the C compiler uh, within the agdev um, repository. And I got it working with the help of a whole bunch of nice folks so that we can now have a, a true binary file that can run the a hex file with all the latest and greatest updates. And I'll show you how I did that too. That's a really neat thing. And that you could get it right here in the Heathen UK Agon Hacks repository. And um, this is really, really nice. This is release four, okay? Um, and these are the utils that I showed you earlier, okay? Let's see, so I'm gonna close out of that one, leave this one here so that we can do the word count. The Agon Light repository, I'm gonna close out of that one. And then hopefully someday in the near future, we'll come back to Indirection, which I really wanna go through this uh, with y'all because I got to the query and next I plan on doing the exclamation and the dollar Indirection uh, operators. So there's a whole bunch of examples here. If you want to start looking ahead, this is the manual right here. Just look it up and do it at your own pace. But if you want to follow along and just have fun and comment and interact, then that would be awesome too. So let me close out of that. And um, let me go back to my Agon Light, the actual Agon Light machine, which is down here. This is the microcomputer that's caused a revolution. It's amazing. It's an amazing little machine. And that's the screen right there. All right, hopefully it's, um, let me see if I can get closer. There we go, that's probably better. I can probably focus just right. There we go, very nice. So let's proceed with uh, some things I thought you would enjoy. Let's see, let me see if I can show a little bit more of the screen right here. There we go, that's probably a little better. Bear with me everybody, there we go, but much nicer. So, if we, let's see, I wanna show you the hex editor first. So let me navigate to my, actually, let me change the mode here so that it's a little, I'm gonna go to mode three, okay? I'm gonna change the background color to 132 and I'm gonna change the foreground color to I'm gonna leave it as white and then I'm gonna do a CLS there we go so up here is my uh, cursor hopefully it's in focus and what I'm gonna do now is list the contents of my uh, directory I can use cat for catalog you will see those are all the files I have in there. And if I go into the MOS, so I'm going to, there we go. So if I go into the MOS folder, let me clear the screen and I'm gonna change directories into the MOS folder and I'm gonna list the contents. And you will see here, up here, ahex.bin. So this is the upgraded. You see how large this one is already. There's so many things going on there, so many improvements. It has grown in size. But that's the file I'm gonna run. And I'm gonna show you, uh, let's see, I think I have, let me navigate back to my root directory because I have two files. I believe they're still there. Um, text one and text two. So I have these two files that I created, text underscore one dot txt, text two dot txt, 
which I'm going to compare using the hex, the A hex editor. Okay, so I'm gonna do just that right now. I'm gonna do a uh, asterisk to run this MOSLET, and I'm gonna do A hex space. I believe I just have to put in the file name if I remember correctly. Text one underscore one dot txt space text two dot txt and if i hit enter there we go yes you can see this is the hex editor it's improved there's so much stuff going on here let me get closer here for you guys so let me focus here a little closer so you can see already check this out this is the position where I'm in right now, offset zero, zero, okay? So the value is a hexadecimal seven, four, which represents the lowercase t, okay? Lowercase t, you see? If I move with my cursor to the right, you will see that it will move to the 68 and then it moved over to the h, okay? And then I can keep doing that and if I go down, you see that this number here is yellow. It's a one, it's a yellow one. And over here it's a 31 and yellow. So if I go to that value and highlight it, the reason that it's yellow and you will see, oops, it changed the color now, <laughs> but that was the difference right there. That was the difference in value, okay? That's where it was different because you can see that this is text file one, but over here it says this is text file two, dot, dot, dot. So the only places where it was different was at that position right there, okay? Which is right here, okay? It has a 31 in this file, the top file, and it has a 32 hexadecimal in this other file. So if I modify this file up here to make it a 32, or if I modify this one down here to make it a 31, I guess this is the one I can modify, the one up here. So let's try that. I'm gonna hit the space and it turned yellow and it deleted the value that was there. And I'm gonna type in 32. And now you can see that over here, it changed it from a one over to a two. What I'm gonna do now is exit and I'm gonna run it again. Let's see. Uh-oh. Did it just halt on me? BBC basic usage run address. Uh-oh. Did I have to run quit? Oh, it was working earlier. Let me see if I can reset the machine with control alt delete. Yes, I reset the machine with control alt delete. I'm going to try listing the program using that same uh, function that I had run uh, previously. So I'm gonna do the, let me do a CLS and I'm gonna run, let's see. This is live folks, so this is the real deal. Let's see what we have. Let me try to focus there. There we go. Uh-oh, the focus is not working very well. Anyway, let's see if I start writing. So if I do a hex, okay, and I do text um, file one, I think it was. Oh my, let me list it again, I forgot. It was text underscore one dot txt. Okay, so if I do a hex text underscore one dot txt, okay, that's the name of that file. And then the other one was text two dot txt. 
could not open text underscore one dot txt. Ooh, I think it messed it up. Let me see if I can open it in nano. <laughs> text underscore one dot txt. Oh, it's there. And it did change it, you see? Because text one had a file one, and now it's a two. So maybe if I do an enter and a backspace and then escape and save it and save it with the same name, maybe I can do it again, the A hex. Let's see. No, could not open text underscore one. So yeah, something happened. That's sad because it was working just fine. And you could see how it was behaving so there might be something I did wrong or maybe there's a bug in the program. I don't know which of the two. It could have been me. And let's see. I'm going to list the contents of my directory again. All right. A hex. Well, let me show you grep. I'm going to move on to grep and then we'll discuss the C compiler thing that I had to do to get this working. So yeah, that's sad that that happened. I'm going to try to clear the screen and show you how I'm going to list the contents of my MOS where I have down here <clears throat> some files called echo bin. That's the echo one. I believe I have up here somewhere the grep. Let's see. I remember. Maybe it's up there. Let me do a VDU 14. I'm going to do a VDU 14 so that we can see the contents of the directory. And then I'm going to list it again. Let's see. Do I have grep in here? I have strings. Mm, no. But we can add it. I'm going to do that right now. So let me navigate over to my Linux machine. And I'm going to transfer it using the hex load. So let me navigate over there and do that really quick so that we can try the grep and then the um, echo, which I think are pretty cool. And those are the Agon Utils folder. So I'm going to uh, CD. Let me make this a little better here so that we can see. All right. Let me see if I can make this a little easier on the eyes. Uh, sorry, everybody. I'm trying to focus here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so if I change directories to my Agon light and display the contents. I have the Agon hex load, which is what I'm using. So I'm going to change into that to find my Python program, which is the send.py that I use to send it over to my Agon light. Okay, so I do a Python. It's a Python program um, called send.py. Okay. And I'm going to be sending the file that I have <clears throat> in the Agon Utils folder. And it's going to be called, let's see what we have there. We have grep. All right. And let's see what. It's bin grep and 
then it's the bin. Yep. And then I need to do the map, I believe. So before we do that, we need to do the dev to notify the COM port, which is uh, TTY USB zero. Okay, so that's there. Okay, TTY USB zero. Now I'm gonna come back over here onto my Agon uh, light screen and do the, wait, where is it? Over there. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna clear the screen over here. And I'm just gonna do, let's see, where are we? Okay, so I'm gonna move into the MOS directory. So I'm gonna change directories. Um, into MOS. Okay. So I'm in the MOS directory and I'm going to do a hex load VDP and the name of the utility is grep.bim. And now it's waiting for me uh, to click enter on my Linux machine over here so that once I do that over there, Okay, up there, we can see how it sends the program, okay, over through the USB serial cable. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter, and it's sending the data, and over here you can see it's doing just that as well. It's really quick, and it says that it's done. It's done. So you can see that it finished over here. Okay, it sent the file via the serial port. Okay, it said it was done. And over here, that was very quick. That's how, how quick it does it. Over here we have the updated version, okay, on our actual Agon Lite computer, okay, microcomputer. So now what I'm gonna do on my Agon Lite I'm gonna clear the screen and list the contents. And now we should see grep in here somewhere. I'm hoping we can get a utility to sort. Uh, okay, it's all the way at the bottom now. You see down here, grep.bin. So let me do the, let me see what other one, grep map. We need to do the grep map as well. So I'm gonna do a hex load. BDP grep.map map. I'm gonna hit enter so it's waiting. And now I'm coming back to my Linux machine to do the second file, okay? The grep map file, which is over here. Okay. You see right there the grep.map file. Okay, we need to do that one now. So let me <clears throat> just modify the script that I have slightly. I'm going to modify it right there. And grep.map. I'm going to hit enter. And it, it was so quick. <laughs> I couldn't capture it on my camera because it was so quick. You see, it did it so quickly. It's amazing. It's it, that's how quickly it did it, and it's done all the way down there. It's done. So let me see if I can actually show you. BDP done. Okay. So now I should be able to use grep. So how do we use grep? Let me show you. How do we use grep? Um, I don't remember exactly what grep stands for. I know it's something very powerful to find strings within your uh, machine. So for example, um, I'm gonna go back to my root folder. I'm gonna navigate back to my root folder, CD uh, root, display the contents and within 
I have a file. I have a file called um, Fruit Array up there. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a grep on Fruit Array because um, I just created a little program that you know goes through an array and writes out some names of fruits and stuff. So I'm gonna clear the screen uh, and I'm going to do a grep on that file, okay? So the way I'm gonna do it is grep, and then I'm gonna, I believe I need to put the string, or then, wait, let's see. If I just run grep, it says, you. this is the usage. Um, you do grep, and then you could do the dash I or dash H if you wanna show the help message. The dash I is for case insensitive matching. Then you put your pattern that you're searching for and the file name. So let's do the grep, grep, and I'm gonna do the uh, dash I for case insensitive. The pattern, I'm gonna look for the word banana. <laughs> and the file name was, uh, oh golly, what was the name of the file again? Fruits, fruit array, oh my, fruit, Array.bas, I guess. So let me try fruit arrays. I don't know. Oh, error opening file, error accessing SD card. Interesting. So it's accessing fruit array.bas. Interesting. So let me clear the screen. And I'm going to reboot my uh, Agon Light because apparently something happened earlier and I'm gonna reboot it. There we go. I'm gonna do a mode eight. Going into MOS. There we go. That's the boot screen that I have right now, which I probably will revise to the latest one that came out because it's simpler up here. They simplified this up here. It's not as busy. So let me display the contents. And um, all right, so let me clear the screen and try this one more time. So I'm gonna do the grep. Uh, dash I, grep dash I, I'm going to look for the word banana. I'm not sure if I have to put that in uh, single quotes. I, I don't remember. I was playing around with this and then it's fruit array uh, BAS. And look at that. It actually searched the file. It lists that it's in line 40 and it found the word banana in line 40. That's how this one is working. That's a MOSLET that we have just um, been gifted with. So thank you very much for this. Um, let's see. The other one, let me see. This is from Vasco Costa. That's the um, commit from Vasco Costa. Um, let me show you over here. It's in the Agon Utils repository for Vasco Costa. If you search GitHub for that, you will find it there because he's given us the echo, grep, strings, and word count. Uh, and this is just uh, showing you how the grep one is working. Let me see, I can probably use echo right here and type in learn agon. There we go. And it just echoes back what you type, uh, what you expect. I'm not sure how, what else I can do with this, but I know it, it, it works. So it's working very well, very well. Um, let's see, what does the strings one do? It's a strings utility for Agon by Sean 
Singstra. Okay. It says the usage is strings dash n x and the file name and a minimum string length of one up to 99. The default string length is four. Control C to abort, store strings.bin in the MOS directory. All right, so I don't know, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it with the fruit array to see what happens. So I'm gonna do clear, or I'm sorry, CLS. I'm gonna do the um, strings. And uh, I'm not gonna put any options. And I'm gonna put fruit array.bis. And it's listing. Hmm. It's listing. Interesting. That's very interesting. It listed the program. But if I do a number. So if I do a dash n um, four, for example, let's see. N. Oh, I, I I can't leave a space, so I probably should do this. Let's see. Let me clear the screen. So I probably should do not leave a space in between the n and the four. No, it still gave me a whole bunch of lines. Let's see. Strings. <clears throat> Let's see. What if I just put a dash four? Uh, let's see. I'm just curious what would happen. So let's clear the screen and then do the same thing I did, instead of a N, I'm just gonna put a dash four. No, invalid parameter. Hmm, optional parameter N for minimum string length, one up to 99, default string length four, equivalent to dash N four. The default is four. So what if I change the default to N three? Let me try with N two. I don't know. I can't see any difference. It's working but I don't know what it's doing. I don't know if you see any difference, I don't. But it, you know, it's showing a listing. Interesting. Let me see what the repository says. It doesn't say much, but it's displaying. And then we have the word count one, which I haven't um, transferred over yet, but I'll probably leave that one for another video because this video is already very long and I haven't even showed you. Let me actually see if I can show you what I did on the C compiler thing. Well, maybe I should make a different video because this one's too long already. It'll take forever to load. So I'm sorry, everybody. Today's been kind of quirky for me. Been trying to do too much in one video, but um, this is wonderful. I mean, we have so many utilities popping up here and there. It's hard to stay focused. I think I'm like uh, that dog in that movie where the house was flying up in the air and the old man had a dog that was uh always looking for squirrels and running after anything that moves and that's me right now <laughs> anyway i hope you'll have a good evening 
it's evening here. So stay safe. Hopefully see you soon. Y'all take care. This is uh, Learn Agon saying goodbye. Till next time. Bye-bye.